eat lunch every day. I typically go for a little walk and I think I'm just going to start talking to you about the painting industry as I do it. And so I really wish that you could be with me on all these calls that I conduct with painting companies every day because I've done about 2,400 of them. It may be 2,500 now, I'm not sure. And you can see I'm just walking, walking around where my office is, which is basically in an industrial ghetto. And um, when I'm on the phone with folks, I mean, I get the same problems over and over and over again. There's nothing new in the painting industry, but let me tell you about a problem I get just constantly, and it has to deal with production rates. So when you open up your painting business and you stop being a crew leader and you start being an owner, you've got to figure out how long it takes to do something. And there are a number of ways that people try to do this. If I get ran over, at least you're here with me in my last minutes. And, and normally there's, there's a few ways that people try to, to solve this estimating problem, okay? The first way they try to solve this estimating problem is just by damn guessing. Well, I reckon that's going to take four days. Which is terrible because if you got a three-man crew, that means you got 24 hours of variance. Another way they try to do it is they'll have some kind of really weird square foot pricing. Sometimes it's from the floor. Well, you don't paint the floor. So if you're in a room that's all walls, you might make a lot of money with that square foot pricing. If you're in a room that's very ornate it's got tons of work to be done on trim doors windows well then it's then it's all messed up let me give you an example i had a guy yesterday who was charging like i think two dollars a square foot on walls and for some reason it included the labor and the material which is a very odd thing you should never combine those and he was doing something like 75 cents per linear foot of trim now, where he got these numbers, he couldn't tell me. I don't know if these are just numbers that float around at the paint store, and people are like, okay, I'll buy that. Sure. Let's let's assign that number to it. When we start doing the numbers, I start backing into what I know is a relatively acceptable production rate. And he was, like, getting paid $14 an hour on the trim and, like, $102 an hour or something like that on the walls. So I'm like, so you're getting screwed on the trim. Your clients are getting screwed on the walls. People just don't know how long it takes to do something. So what you're in the business of doing as a painting contractor is you're buying labor wholesale and you're selling at retail. That's essentially what you're doing. And so you've got to know exactly how far an hour of a painter's labor goes and if you don't let's say that you don't know what it is it, it it just causes all these problems let me tell you about a few of them the first thing is people's gross profit margins are all over the place well the simple fact is most people can't tell you how much money they made on any given painting job they don't do any job costing Another issue or a problem that it creates is you can't hold your painters accountable to do anything because you're just guessing, right? You're guessing, they're guessing, you're trying to hold them accountable to a guess. Now you're all aggravated at them because they went over budget or maybe because you don't use production rates, you don't even give them a budget. People can't hit a budget if they don't have one. They need to know labor hours. And, and days don't work either because there's just too much variance. You know, a three-day job, somebody's done half a day, that's a sixth, one out of six variance. That's almost 20% variance. Well, if gross profits are only 50%, you're in trouble. And then finally, another big issue that it causes is with subcontractors. Subcontractors always feel like they're getting screwed. And most of the time they are because they're having to go out and perform to a guess. Now, for some of you, you're pretty good guessers. And if you got a subcontract model where you're like, say for example, I'm walking back to the office now. 
say for example you do a 50% split which is about where you need to be on everything actually I think you should be a 50% split on labor and you should just buy the materials yourself and those are your own profits that's my opinion um, especially if you're in the painters purchasing group because you can just make a boat boatload of money on materials and still save the, the client money far more than they get it at retail but if you don't have that those production rates put in if you can't say to a subcontractor okay how long is it going to take you to paint this swath of wall here oh i'll take me 30 minutes well what if i give you an hour how long is it going to take you to paint this linear feet of trim from here to here oh i can do that in 20 minutes what if i gave you 45 because people always think they can paint faster than their painters actually paint and so when you don't know how long it takes to do something it, it, it messes up your job costing messes up your profitability messes up your ability to hold your painters accountable it's crazy and the way to get production rates is just so unbelievably simple it's like if you wanted to know how long it took to run a mile you would not go out to a track look at the track tilt your head sideways and go well that there looks like about 10 minutes no you put on your tennis shoes you'd warm up you'd go run the thing you'd set a timer you'd run it you'd stop the timer looks like this is exactly how long it takes me it's so simple so you need to know that with walls you need to know that with linear feet of trim you need to know that with how long it takes to paint a door and casing time it and here's another pro tip instead of guessing when you go out to paint try to paint that same thing for as long as you can uninterrupted and by that I mean if you're gonna paint walls go there set up your drop cloth get everything completely ready to paint paint the walls paint the walls for as close to eight hours seven hours as you can get the drop cloth pack everything up get out to your truck hit the stop button because what that's going to do is give you a production rate for walls that also has the setup in it same thing with trim you don't want to do production rates on trim when you've only got like 60 feet of trim you want to do production rates on trim when you can set up paint trim pretty much for the whole day break down and then that way you don't have to worry about uh, having separate prep numbers or setup and breakdown numbers not to be confused with prep but rather now you've got it all included so the, the summary of all this is 2500 assessments later I'd say 85 to 90 you know, probably more like 90 percent of the time I have to send new members a production rate module so that they can figure out how long it takes them to do things and I do give them guidance on hey these are some production rates that I trust by people that I trust to put in the time energy and effort to make sure that this stuff is accurate but at the end of the day you want to verify it in the field and so if you're watching this video chances are you got the same production rate problem so you need to get out there and get it fixed and the easiest way to do that is to make a list of the 20 percent of things that you paint 80 percent of the time and go out and paint those things for as long as you can just one specific thing and then see how long it takes collect some data on it average it out get your production rates very simple if you sold pizzas for a living you wouldn't yell back at the cook every time they were in the kitchen and they were cooking a pepperoni pizza and go hey Bobby how much does this pizza cost today now in the moment you wouldn't be guessing that no you'd know how much cheese how many pieces of pepperoni what it cost for for the uh, for the flour what it, how long it, it, it took to make it you probably divide how much of the volume that you did with all your overhead in it. like you'd know how much your pizza cost you put it on a menu this is what the pizza cost but for some reason in painting we just show up and guess and guess and guess and they're never right and you may think oh i'm pretty good at guessing no you're not you know how i know you're not good at guessing because nobody is good at guessing uh you can't take a 10-foot board out to your backyard without a tape measure and cut it exactly 10 feet or six feet rather 
you can't do it. And so when you're estimating these projects that have hundreds of measurements sometimes, at least dozens, those guesses just don't end up working out. So get your production rates put together. Spread the word. So when I do these diagnostic calls with painting contractors, I don't have to give them so many bad, you know, so much bad news. I'd like to give them some good news. Great, you're already doing that. We can move on to something else. And maybe that's you. All right, this is the first installment of Wandering Around with Brandon. I hope you've enjoyed it. Production rates are on my mind because I did two calls yesterday. Both people had the exact same problems because of the exact same reasons. I'm trying to keep you from having it. Take care. Talk to you next time.